Welcome back to part 2 of what if Qui-Gon became a force ghost. Thank you to those of you who watched the first part of this video. To recap what happened in that part in case you haven't seen it, after the death of Qui-Gon, the force spirit had helped the Jedi try to unravel the mystery of the Sith and through the training of Anakin Skywalker. Although the identity of Palpatine remained a secret, Qui-Gon was able to direct the Jedi to examine the death of Master Sifo Dyas, and the Jedi are now on their way to Kamino. The Jedi soon enter the thick atmosphere of the aquatic planet, and the three passengers held onto the walls of the Republic Pelter class frigate as the brutal storms and downpours of rain clattered onto them. The pilots swooped along the ocean's waves, trying to see through the poor visibility for a landing spot, but they all heard a loud metallic sound beneath them. Rising from the floor had been a group of Trident class assault ships, put in place by Dooku to ward off any intruders into a secret project, and the ship began to lose control. The Jedi jumped out and topped onto the passing air whales, then eventually found a platform to land on, which happened to be one of that of Tipoga cities as the storm finally subsided. The trio gazed through the array of platforms, and they could not miss the giant military complex in front of them. As they move towards it, they are greeted by the Kaminoan Prime Minister Lama Su, who provided them with a tour of the city. Entering the central cloning chamber, the Jedi even more surprised to find the army that had been built for Dooku, but the Kaminoans revealed they had in fact been built for the Jedi to use. From what Qui-Gon had revealed to them, the army was not an innocent servant for the Republic, and after using mind tricks on the Kaminoans, they split up to destroy the area and find the truth. Yoda uses his diminutive stature to glide through the area undetected, all the way to the roof of the barracks, where he finds the Kaminoans talking to the hooded Dooku. The Jedi Grandmaster absorbed every word of his old apprentice, and as they spread out into the city to find the Jedi, Yoda pounced on the opportunity to use an astromech droid and take evidence of all of the recordings that had taken place between Dooku and the Kaminoans, then went to assist Plo Koon in the genetics hall. The Keldor Master had already discovered the suspicious inhibitor chips, and tied with Dooku's conversation with the Kaminoans, they took one sample to investigate at the Jedi Temple, as Obi-Wan reported that he had set up the bombs he had found in the supplies room to activate. Jumping out of the roof, they dive back into the water and watch all of the platforms detonating before calling for transport back to Coruscant. The Jedi land at the temple, relieved that they had destroyed a threat to their order, but outside of the building, the population regarded this as a needless destruction and protested against the violence. With the evidence in hand, the Jedi quickly head to the Senate building. There the Separatists and their allies deny allegations of their involvement, and Palpatine cannot prove that Dooku was the hooded figure in the holographic recording on Kamino. All appear to be lost for the Jedi as they trudge back to their home, but Obi-Wan had other ideas. The Jedi Knight had gone straight to the Jedi Archives after the mission, as he had been curious about the manufacture of the Trizen class assault ship, and discovered that the Kolikoids were part of the Techno Union, and they had participated in a little known event named The Gathering, where numerous powerful figures from across the galaxy performed in annual celebrations on the planet of Sojourn. The suspicious Jedi dug a little further into the archives, and found that it had been organised by the deceased member of the intergalactic banking clan, Higo Damas II, who had also been in contact with the Kaminoans. The ghost of Qui-Gon appeared once again, as the Jedi Knight could not decipher the deception that the Sith had laid out, and the Jedi Master tells his Padawan that they had been right to destroy Kamino. Qui-Gon also informs the Jedi that he had felt the dark side on their home planet, but it was so well shielded that those in the Living Force had not detected it, and even Qui-Gon did not know of his true identity. Little did they realise that this mysterious darkness had been in the form of Palpatine, and the secret Dark Lord of the Sith had been furious at the Jedi's destruction of his clone army. Without the troopers, he could not betray the Jedi as he wanted, nor do Dooku to repair his mistake by increasing the rate of production on Geonosis and on every other Separatist controlled planet. Aware that failure from Sidious at the ultimate price, the apprentice stepped up to the challenge, not only producing new droids, but also a formidable fleet that the Republic could not counter, and started the war that his master desired. Dooku lured the Jedi by causing a disturbance above the planet of Geonosis, and the signal was relayed by Palpatine to the Jedi, and they had no option but to respond, and even if it was not the Clone War, the Republic and the Separatists still locked into battle. That is it for part 2 of What If Qui-Gon Became a Force Ghost. If you'd like to see a part 3 soon, 
please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what What If you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.